In today's video, I want to give an example of how you can work with drum bus compression by having two different compressors. One that is more gentle, one that is more explosive for a bit of a glue factor. And just for simplicity, I'm going to be using the same plugin today for both tasks, a P11 Abyss. And it's also a way to show that you can get many sounds out of one compressor. All right, here's my session, and I have a really basic drum kit here, a live drum kit that I want to use for today's example. And I've done a really quick balance of it too, but uh, today we'll just focus on the, the drum bus, and especially the P11. And my goal with this compressor is just to set up a, a really gentle compression that is just sort of hugging the sound and controlling it without adding too much compression to it. And the first thing I do when I set up a compressor like this for a drum kit is always rolling off the lows from it because I don't want to send any sort of sub frequencies or too much bass into the compressor circuit, to the side chain of the compressor, because it's going to give you a very sluggish kind of compression, uh, the opposite to tight compression. So for those who don't know, uh, the way it works is that whenever a sound gets sent into a compressor, it always gets split into two. Uh, one goes into the speakers, into the listening path, the one we hear, the other copy of the sound goes into the compressor circuit, the heart of the compressor, and the sound that is traveling that way is what the compressor is hearing. But we can actually EQ what's going into the side chain differently. And in that way, we can change the way the compressor behaves, right? And what I love about the P11 is that it also has a listening button on it. So when we press the listening button, we can actually hear what the compressor is hearing. We can listen to the side chain. And now we went too far and only the snare is controlling the compressor. Whatever is left of the kick is so quiet that it doesn't pass over the threshold. So let's roll back the filter a bit so we get kick there as well. So now both of them, the kick and the snare, are controlling the compressor. All right, that's good. So let's move on to attack and release time for this first compressor. And for this one, I want to have a really slow attack and fast release. So I'm dialing in a 30 millisecond release. And that's pretty fast. And this compressor has an unusually fast release time on its fastest setting, around one microsecond. So even in this area, we're actually getting a fast release time. For the attack time, I'm going for 40 milliseconds, which is pretty long. And this ensures that we will get some transients passing through. We won't kill the punch. And then you also have the PSI knob up here, which basically allows you to control the hardness or softness of your compressor. So when it's set to 10, you're getting a much more aggressive and hard compression. And when it's set to zero, you're getting a much calmer and softer compression. So for this first compressor, I'm gonna set it to five. And if you wanna keep learning about compression, I really recommend subscribing to this channel because there's a lot more to come. For example, next week I'm going to make a video about uh, multiband compression, so stay tuned. Now I'm going to set up my second compressor, and the goal with that is to get a really crunched and over-the-top and saturated kind of compression. And I will keep the same sidechain settings for this one too. Uh, but I will set the attack and release time very differently for this one. And I want to try to emulate a Fairchild 660, classic compressor from the 60s that was used a lot by the Beatles to get that squashed exciting drum sound of Ringo and of course we won't be able to get the same sound but by dialing in the same attack and release time at least we can get some of its characteristics and I happen to know that a Fairchild on its fast setting has an attack time of 200 microseconds which is really fast and a release time around 300 milliseconds so let's copy that in here and see what it sounds like and right away we have something that kind of sounds like a 60s Beatlesque kind of drum sound and it really brings out the room and the acoustics of the drums. And for this second compressor I'm gonna set my PSI knob all the way to 10 because I want a really aggressive compression for this one. And the last thing I want to do to this sound is to to add a bit of grit, a bit of transformer saturation to it. The transformers the the transformers. And something really useful with this plugin is that you have a, a transformer saturation section 
that is coming after the compressor. So basically your compressed sound is given some extra edge. So we just have to bring the input knob up and then I can compensate by bringing down the output if I want to, to keep the same level of the sound. And if you watch this meter, we can see when the sound gets into that clipping saturation region. So let's start by boosting 10 decibel, the input, and I'll bring down the output by the same amount and see what happens. And as you can see, the sound is not actually loud enough to clip our transformers. So what I can do is to bring down this knob and it'll be easier for us to saturate our circuit. There we go. Now we're getting some saturation. We can also choose what transformers we're using in our circuit. And here is where it's getting a little nerdy, but stay with me and I'll explain. And this is the cool part. You can choose to either have a class A or class A slash B transformer. But generally a class A transformer, when it's overdriven or clipped, it will give you slightly sharper transients, while a class A slash B transformer will sound a little thicker. As you will notice, it's a very subtle difference. And let's start with the class A transformer. And now, here's the class A slash B transformer. In my ears, the class A transformer sounded a little bit better for this purpose. And if you want to, you can also add another transformer to the output amplifier. But I will keep it like this for now. Another section that I won't go into in this video, as it will get very long, is this section up here. And this allows you to really dig into your sidechain and EQ it even more if you want to, and really make your compressor behave the way you want. And let's move on to the last stage where I will blend this one with the first sound we made. So here's our main bus that we did at the beginning, the first compressor. As you can hear, it's quite natural sounding, not too compressed. But it's a little bland, right? So let's blend in a little bit of our exciting glue compressor. That was all for today, and thanks for watching. And feel free to comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. Have a great day. Bye-bye. So good, so good for you. Make it hefty, hot, and hearty. Take tea and see.